Welcome to Showreel. I'm Claire Abbotts. And I'm Jasmine Thone. And I'm special guest host Andrew Cowderoy. Later in the show, Jasmine and I will review the recently released British film Filth. But first, we're going to discuss some recent news. Okay, so I thought we'd, we're going to start off having a look at films that are coming soon because there's quite a few big films mm. in uh, pre and like post production and stuff that are yep. going to come out. Um, so obviously, all the Marvel ones, I'm really looking forward to them. Yes. Uh, so we've got, got um, X Men First Class 2 is coming out. Um, soon. It's soon. <laughs> yeah, soon. soon. This yeah. December? No, no, actually, it's coming it's out next year. Class yeah, it's, two. it's called. Well, um, I know that. I know that. It's the second one. Days of Future Past. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, like, the, have you guys read up on it? Like, the Trail summary is also. that I think that it's combining the old, the X Men currently know, and also Days of Past. Yeah. And I was like, mm -hmm. but. I'm really it's glad Rogue's in it because I love Rogue. <laughs> kind of like it just feels wrong. Like they don't match like yeah. both the universe is a little bit off but don't they always tend to do that with any like whether it's dc marvel whatever they don't stick to the canon mm. like it, i mean some the really hardcore fans don't like it but they, they have their yeah. own license do you think as know, a movie like, to make up their that's own? the thing like the thing that always confused me about comics is they have so many of them like running at once like there's so mm. many different universes yeah but i heard apparently in the movie like the original storyline of the days of future past comic series that it was taken from was completely about rogue but for the movies they've made it way more about wolverine purely because he has oh, his own movies which is kind of annoying it's just like isn't he got another movie coming out soon no, yeah exactly please no like, how many wolverine much. movies is awesome. how many are there every time yeah. he gets a new ab he feels like he has to bring out a new movie yeah. i think that's the problem with that um <laughs> He's going through a Boing, very yeah. long Boing. life crisis. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Spider-Man 2 is the next, the other Marvel one that's coming out. What do you think about that? I didn't see the remake of Spider-Man 1 because I looked at the trailer, <gasps> like the yeah. one with Andrew yeah. Garfield, and I'm just like, how is this any different to the one back with what's his name? Um, yeah, Toby the other guy. Yeah, yeah Toby Maguire. Like well, that trailer looked identical. Toby Maguire in it. <laughs> <laughs> like it was just like the same movie. But without Toby Maguire, but the weird thing, like if it was like fifty years later, yeah, whatever. Mm. But it's like ten years later. I don't know. See, what what do you even think about that? I, I thought it was way too soon to even be remaking something. Exactly. It was similar to when they went, or oh, Twilight had just sort of finished, and they said, "We're going to now re already in plans to yeah. remake it." I was exactly, like, "That's yeah. that's really really soon. Can you necessarily do mm. any better?" I Actually, think remaking Twilight. I, there were rumours of it. As like, Once the last one came out, there were rumours that they were in talks to start remaking it already. I was like, That's why? horrifying. But why? See, they, they kind of did that with Batman because like after the Christopher oh. Nolan Dark Knight one's finished, mm. now they want to do Batman and Superman. Like, yeah. it, Do you think there are too many superheroes? It's kind of... It's I'm getting just, a bit... It is, but like it's it's the, problem, the problem is Hollywood. Hollywood's always been this way, but it's becoming more and more just like... So much. Well, I, maybe it's always been this way. Maybe it's just been because, like, I'm noticing it more. But it's just becoming so much, like, about the money, about the money, about the money. What's been successful? Yeah. Let's remake exactly the same thing as what's been successful. Yeah. So it's, just, it's getting kind of annoying. It's just like, I love superheroes, but we don't need to have them ever, like, so many of them. Yeah. yeah. I love them, but it's yeah. like, just a bit overdone. Yeah. Um, so another one that's going to be coming out soon is Maleficent. It's mm. uh, with Angelina Jolie, and I can't remember who directed it, but it's basically a take on the Sleeping Beauty story, but from the perspective of Maleficent, who was supposed to be cool. the evil evil queen. Yeah. Well, if you but, watch the trailer, like, I watched yeah. the trailer recently, and it almost looks like they've put Aurora in the protagonist, mm. like, centre. Like, they, they follow her in the trailer, which yeah. means mm -hmm. that... You're probably going to follow her in the well, movie. Un unless, no, well, unless the trailer, the point of it is to reveal at the end that it's not. Like, hopefully that's what they've done. They're sort of building it up to be like, to, to pull the carpet out and go, we're actually doing it about yeah. this so-called evil queen. If you Have mm. you read the, the synopses for it? I haven't really, but has there been yeah. a like Sleeping Beauty remake recently or is it just still the old Disney No, they, they did uh, the Robin Hood, uh, sorry, not Robin Hood, uh, <laughs> Red Riding Hood, they did as a remake and Snow White and the Huntsman. But so they, they haven't remade Sleeping Beauty though yet. Not yeah. that I know of. Okay, that's okay then. Yeah, yeah. No, that's <laughs> that's fine. Okay. I thought they were just like remaking it again after they'd done it. I'm like, mm. wait a minute, no, they haven't. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't know, like it's kind of cool. like. I understand doing it from there, from her perspective, if it's like wicked and it's like showing her that she's actually good, or if it's um. Well, that's actually what it is in the synopsis. It kind of goes back to before there's Aurora okay, and before she marries then. that guy, and she's meant to be like this really strong, powerful mm. feminist. Uh, she's like a princess mm. or a queen or someone, and her land gets invaded, and she's the only one who can actually stand up and become mm. this warrior queen, mm. whatever, to actually defeat the armies. But then once they. Some, I'm assuming it's a curse or something yeah. so fairy tale ish. 
and she gets betrayed and it seems like she's evil. Oh, okay. And then of course Aurora comes in and this king who supplant mm. who sort of took over the kingdom. So it's, it's, it's quite a different take on it, but it'll be That's interesting right. to see. I'm really interested to how see it, it purely off. because the trailer does not make it look like that to me. Yeah. It makes it look totally like it's Aurora's the good person and Maleficent, Maleficent, whatever yeah, name yeah. Is, is the bad one. Yeah. So actually, if know. you look at the original, like the Disney movie, mm. Maleficent actually has a legitimate reason to be as angry as it's she still. does. <laughs> because um, based on the time that it was in, like medieval times, she did not get an invite to the biggest party mm. out there. And that is the biggest insult you can get yeah. as, a, as like a noble or a royal. Like yeah. they invited every fairy, but mm. they didn't invite her. So like first world problems. Yeah, like, like get to the party. Pretty much, that's it. It was like the biggest <laughs> insult ever. So she had yeah. a legitimate right yeah. to, I don't know, curse yeah. Aurora. This could just be like the musical fan in me getting annoyed, but yeah. it's kind of like it seems kind of like they've gone, oh, Wicked's really popular, but Universal has the rights to that. Uh, Let's make it with Sleeping yeah. Beauty. And it, I mean, it's got the draw card tool. We've got Angelina Jolie in it. You've got Juno Temple, who was in. I think she's been quite a lot now. Yeah. Like she was in um, Atonement and whatever. So it's it kind of does as well of, seem like to me call, is I like suppose. they were making a Sleeping Beauty movie, and then Angelina Jolie came in. It's just like <laughs> I want to be the star. Make it about me. And all of a sudden, it had to be Maleficent, not Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering if that like actually happened. <laughs> It'll be interesting. Because that's what Angelina Jolie is. Exactly oh, that's like what she watch. speaks like that. But I am the star. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then we've got Carrie is the new one that's coming out soon. Ew. Yeah, I know. I, a lot of people have had that reaction I saw on your face just there. It's, it's, it, the original versus the new one, what do you guys, have you guys even well, seen? I love the actress that's in the new one, but from what I've heard, mm -hmm. it's good, but it's yep. like just not as good as the original. Yeah. Um, uh, see, so that's the problem. With I haven't like seen the remakes. original, so yeah. It's hard to yeah. do a remake of a classic, like an old film that people... Yeah can't get attached to it, even if it is a bad old yeah, film. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, I know they're doing the same with oh, It's a Wonderful Life. I don't know if you guys have yeah, seen I've heard that. that. Yeah. Or they're yeah. making a sequel at least. Like, I think a sequel. Yeah. I'm yeah. worried after. about that. I think it's going to like, oh, yeah. don't wreck a good thing. <laughs> Not that I've seen it, which I really should have. But still, <laughs> just like, don't <laughs> like... Informed things. opinions from Andrew Cowdery. <laughs> Informed right opinions. Here, right here, right here. I know what we're doing. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, we have to take a break, but stay tuned for more Showreel. Welcome back to Showreel. There have been a lot of exciting things happening in TV, which we're going to discuss uh, shortly, but one of the most exciting is the Doctor Who 50th anniversary special coming up. Uh, so have you guys uh, seen the Pregle episode, gotten into all the, seen all so the buzzards excited. around it? Jasmine says no. I haven't yeah. watched since they introduced Clara, so. Okay. Yeah. My I sister's, yeah, she's similar. She doesn't like Clara. She just thinks, I don't know, they're weak. Which I kind of understand. Like, I really oh, like. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, but it's hard with the companions because, like, each time they bring in one, they've got to mm. kind of find a new dynamic. Like, you can't have Rose was, in, yep. was truly in love with Rose. Then yep. Martha was the one who was, like, unrequited where he didn't notice her. Who was the next one? Oh, Catherine Tate's mm. character. Donna was, like, and I think they really, like, completely not attractive. Like, like how many relationship well, dynamics they can added, like, they added in Rory, they added in, like, it was really good. But maybe they yeah. did. I know it's, like, almost always been, like, doctor and female companion. Mm. But maybe they just, well, like, it's been well, going for so many years. Maybe they need to switch it off. Some of the older ones, like, isn't yeah, the, the initial the one was uh, some kid, a, a, a child, like, and then his, their two teachers from school who'd sort of mysteriously followed like them. like that, yeah. Yeah, and that's Maybe we need trip. more of something, more something like that, I'm thinking. Like, I love Martha. I love Rose. Oh, I God, love, I like, <laughs> I love Martha and Rose the most, and I yeah. love Donna and everyone else still, but, mm. like, Maybe we do need something like Arthur and Amy. Mm. Not, not Arthur's the actor's yeah. name. What's his name? Rory. Um, Rory. Rory and um, and Amy again. Yeah, like yeah. just something that mixes it up a little bit. So, have you, know. you seen the prequel episode? No, no, I haven't. I, I okay. honestly haven't seen anything about it since they introduced Clara. That's Aww. that's the truth. I, the, I haven't. What? I'm not sure what you thought of it. I, I loved it, but I thought the best thing about it, and I was actually talking to one of our friends about this. Yeah. Best thing about it is that. It doesn't like, cr it's so short, yet it shows so much. It's really, really mm. informative. Fills so many kind of holes, not yeah, holes yeah. in the story, but like in things about the story. But it does it so sim like it does it so easily. It doesn't like, s at, like, it's not obvious it's doing this. It just like really subtly yeah. 
like does things that then lets the audience show it. Mm. So I think like this is what people need to be watching now how to make short films. You don't need to like be complicated, just nice and like yeah. set up something nice and short and this will do it for you. I yeah. did feel like they kind of run out of budget for the special effects <laughs> side of that the prequel, which I'm hoping they've oh, put yeah. into making uh, the actual episode because yeah. it's going to be aired. I think they're airing it at Maya Cinema, like they're airing yeah. it at actually they're cinemas in three like, D. Yeah, yeah cinemas in, around yeah, the world. Yeah. Cinema, yeah. yeah, yeah, me too. So um, hopefully, oh, you know. my favorite thing. Sorry to interrupt. Hopefully, no, this isn't really a spoiler. <laughs> my favorite thing was just that they got the old Doctor back, oh, old number no. eight, eight, nine, eight. Which, which eight, one? Eight. eight. Uh, Paul McGann. He was Paul the one McGann. just before they re rebooted eight. the whole thing. And yeah. the whole thing. He was the Doctor. I was, I was like, <laughs> what is this? This is awesome. <laughs> I was really happy. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was really cool. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Um, mm. So other things that are coming up in TV, we are having to talk about American TV. Um, so you were saying, Andrew, that The Killing, it's an yes. a it was an AMC cop drama, but now it's going to be mm. on Netflix. Yeah, now once again, I haven't seen it, <laughs> but I've heard really good things about The Killing, and um, and yeah, it's been picked up by Netflix in the same way as like um, Arrested Development and uh, all the other ones that have been picked up by Netflix. I can't remember. <laughs> um, so I was having, I was reading. So yeah, uh, like, like the, it's fourth season going yeah. into it. Yeah. So Sorry. the killing is. I was just had a look at the synopsis. It's a, like a police investigation and also the story of a grieving family. And there's like a Seattle uh, political campaign. And they all sort of unite in some sort of way yeah. after this body of a 17-year-old girl was found in the trunk of a car. So it seems like a bit of a an intertwining sort of murder story. But apparently, wasn't it? Uh, I don't, don't know where it failed, but it didn't quite make it on AMC. Is well, that yeah, why it's it got, not going like, to Netflix? To be honest, I hadn't heard about it until someone told me about it a okay. few weeks, of, like about a month ago. Yeah. And I researched it and it looked pretty cool. I thought it mm. kind of looked like a hybrid of like Twin Peaks and Love Actually, like jammed into, <laughs> like CSI Love that's, Actually and Twin Peaks, like jammed into one. Those don't, that's, that's like just having fish and strawberry ice cream. I don't <laughs> know if that's actually going to work. No. But, um, but yeah, like it was cancelled mm, twice over its three seasons, <laughs> so pretty good. That's a boating. Cancelled twi yeah. like cancelled after each season, and Bone then well oh, yeah. for the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely have something to live forward for. Again, Netflix picked it up, so that's always good. I like when I like when good shows get that like new new home on Netflix. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Orphan Black was another, that's an American production. That yeah, you were, I've, about. I've heard really good things. I haven't seen it either, oh, good. but um, I've heard really good things about it. It's basically about um, this, I have no idea. Sorry, excuse me. Um, I had no idea about it, but um, apparently it's about this girl who has different clones of herself and it basically follows the storyline of each one and like it's played by the same girl, so she has yeah. to play different people. And apparently, she does a really fantastic job, and you have no idea that like wow. you wouldn't know. And I was like, "That's wow. pretty cool." I need to watch that. Yeah, yeah that's it, awesome. It, it sounds fantastic. I just haven't gotten into it, and I'm really excited to start watching it. That's nice. what the holidays yeah. are for. Hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have so much to catch up on. See, that's, it's a shame that there's uh, we don't get a lot of those sort of American, yeah. like those more niche ones that maybe mm. aren't you know, wildly popular with everyone. But we sh like it's the same with, I've been watching a lot of UK TV. I don't know if you guys have mm. caught up on that sort of thing. Um, but like there was, a, say, a series called uh, Utopia um, mm. that I saw. And I don't think it's even aired in Australia, mm. but it's it's kind of a, a sci-fi comic book. Oh, uh, you telling me about that. It had yeah, like yeah, amazing it, it, colour yeah, grading that you very, really liked. Very, very like, highly saturated. There's yeah. quite a bit of violence, but it's really stylized, And it's just so well shot and the story's amazing and we Australians kind of just miss out yeah. on that sort of thing I feel like I know yeah we do no, yeah. especially sorry like for like in the US they've got like 95% of the population subscribes to cable but here it's like yeah it's tw like 15 or <laughs> like 10 10 or 15 it's just yeah. you it's, pretty it's just yeah. you essentially <laughs> it's yeah. like if you don't have cable and you don't get it in a maybe different manner then yeah. there's just so many shows that you can't watch mm -hmm. yeah so I, f I feel like Orange is the New Black was, has recently been on a showcase oh, in, yes. on Foxtel, but like it's such a good show, oh, and I hear it might be coming to like Channel Seven or something. But it's so I don't long. Know, I watched afterwards. the trailer for that, and the first half I sort of thought, oh, I'm you know I might be slightly interested. It looks like it's you know a girl going mm. to prison. I was like, oh, it might be right. And then the second half of the trailer was just like complete melodrama, like just girls just going. Yes. To be honest, like okay, I, like, I loved it, and a lot of people I've talked to loved it. But yeah. my mum and my sister just were like, my sister hated it, and my mum was just like, eh. did they say why they didn't like it? Like, because 
I think it sounds interesting, but I have no idea mm. if it would be actually worth watching. I don't know. Like, it has some like stuff talking, like some pretty extreme matters that they kind of joke about a bit. So I think it can kind of like, depending on what your tastes are, it can be a bit like. Well, yeah. it's definitely been highly acclaimed in America exactly. anyway. So and it's, it's like Genji Cohen who did Weeds, and I loved Weeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, really liked Weeds. So it's yeah. Oh, no, has a good creator behind yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we do get to see it on Australian TV Exactly, sometime. hopefully soon. Not yeah. like 30 Rock where they put on about 11 at night. Oh, exactly, oh, yeah. <laughs> actually oh, want to see it, so, I yeah. It. Yeah, I was watching, um, this is a bit of a random kind of thing, but I was watching, random interlude, I was watching... Uh, like I think the first episode of season seven and it's just it's such a good show <laughs> if you haven't seen 30 Rock go see it <laughs> I haven't seen it oh. <laughs> go see it <laughs> oh well that's all we have time for um, we have to take another break we'll be back soon with reviews of filth don't go away <laughs> Welcome back to Showreel. This week, Claire and I are reviewing Filth, a new British comedy film by John S. Bard. Let's take a look at the trailer. What does that make me then? You're a policeman. Hush, hush, no, hush, hush. <laughs> Bingo. What made you join the force, Bruce? Police oppression, brother. You wanted to stamp it out from the inside. No, I wanted to be a part of it. Filth. <laughs> Based on the Irvine Welsh novel of the same name, Filth is every bit as dirty and depraved as the name implies, but in a deliciously satisfying way. In the way that you laugh and enjoy the evils of the film that you know you really shouldn't, but you just can't help but enjoy it. Uh, the film centres around corrupt cop Detective Sergeant Bruce Robertson, a veteran of the Edinburgh Police Force, who is devoted to what he calls the games, the manipulation of others in pointless and often cruel ways. He's in line for a long sought after promotion, which hinges on his ability to solve a brutal murder case, and he will stop at nothing to get what he wants. Between his cocaine fueled sex romps with colleagues' wives, to his increasing paranoia, and his alcoholic binges just to get him through each day, we, the audience, watches Robertson sinks further and further into a dark abyss, wondering just how deep this well of depravity and destruction goes. The pleasure of filth lies largely in James McAvoy's interpretation of the main character, from his range of facial expressions, his flaunting leer, his insane doomed grin, to the cunning and malice of his underhand scheming. The movie also gets some of its character and humour from its unwillingness to compromise on Welsh's colourful use of the Scottish vernacular. And admittedly, the thick Scottish accents in the film did make it a tad difficult to understand at the beginning, but once your ear adjusts, it really is one of those things that brings the movie to life. The vivid colours, the symbolic use of the bizarre and grotesque, and the brilliant cinematography make this world come alive in a unique way, which really suits the chaos of the film and its main character. The only thing I didn't like about this film was the use of dream sequences with Bruce's psychiatrist, played by Jim Broadbent. These scenes felt to me like an afterthought and were the only times in the film when I felt that I was being slightly spoon-fed the details instead of being given the puzzle pieces to fit together myself, as was the case for the rest of the film. For the most part though, the film's structure is exceptionally well thought out so as to keep the audience thinking and is filled with witty dialogue where not a word is wasted. Be warned, there is a fair bit of violence and the frequent use of profanities, drugs and sexual references mean that the easily offended should perhaps steer clear of this one. But if you can stomach that sort of thing, I highly recommend this film as a must-see. I give it five stars out of five. What did you think, Jasmine? Filth was fantastic. I say this even though I missed the first 20 minutes of it. That said, perhaps the first 20 minutes were absolutely awful and would have changed my mind completely. However, that's, about, that's besides the point. From what I saw of it, I left with a big grin and anticipation for more great films to come. This may be one of the only times I haven't walked out at the end of a film wondering why I watched it. Anyway, my last review went for way too long, like twice as long as it should have, so I'll chop straight to it. James McAvoy plays the awful character of Bruce, a lying, cheating, and more than likely psychopathic policeman. Trying to put it nicely, he's a manipulative, sex-crazed, drugged-up, pathetic excuse for a human, and you can't help but love and hate him for it. 
We watch him on his perceived journey of career elevation as he destroys his rival's chances. But from our view, we find it's a spiral of self-destruction. Honestly, it's really just him building a claymore facing himself. And oh gosh, the dialogue. I need to get my hands on the script and read it. The dialogue was fast and eloquent and oh so character matching. Since this film is very character centric and character driven with only one main character, that's all I can really say character wise. But story and plot wise, wow. I actually enjoyed myself. I wasn't force fed a plot. There were crumbs and I followed them to the bitter end and was more than happily surprised by it. I was satisfied. Of course, there were some points where I felt they could have held back a bit, particularly the psychologist scenes, but by science, the symbolism was just flooring. A bit over the top at times, but every single thing was there for a gosh darn reason. Everything was fought out. This is of course because this is not your average film. In fact, for a cop-centric film, I'm almost certain there wasn't a single gun pill. Those dream sequences and slips in sanity cut and rather randomly, but somehow wonderfully fitting, and the colour grading was beautiful. At no point was I allowed to slip out of my engagement with the film to question shots or takes. I was actively involved in watching the film the entire way through. The only real critique, I have to say, is that I would have loved it if they had lingered on the shot, on the last shot, a fraction longer, or carried the noise on past the end of the shot. But I understand why they did it. Still... I didn't like that single second. I didn't think I'd see the day I'd be praising a film so much. The world must surely be coming to an end. I'd get filth five pigs in a mud bath. Have you seen filth, Andrew? Or you've seen the trailer at least, haven't you? No, I haven't. No, I've seen the trailer, yeah. Um, I've heard really good things, and not only from you two. I was actually meant to see it last night, but then... Because it was playing uh, at Biff, yeah. wasn't it? The yeah, yeah, the exactly. Apologist. It was playing at Biff, and then I was going to yeah. go see it, and then I didn't know I was doing this. Yeah. Um, so I would have gone see it and seen it, but I, I, didn't, I didn't in the end. Um, but yeah, I've heard really good things, and I feel kind of bad because... Like when I saw the trailer first, I'm like, this is like train spotting and hot fuzz. And then I'm like, wait a minute, no, it's not. They just both have the same accents in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt like a bit of an idiot. But yeah, uh, I'm sure it's great. It's it looked really good. It did look really good. It's interesting seeing James McAvoy in that sort of role because yes. he's been like, you know, Mr. Tumnus the Fawn in, in Narnia. <laughs> and then he was, he? yeah, then he's in, in X Men. I loved him in X Men, mm. yeah. But it's, this is quite a different turn. And it's also, like, one of the... Actually, I, I, th I think it's happening more now, but he gets to use his own accent, his Scottish yeah, accent. That's good. So many, like, David Tennant in <laughs> yeah, yeah. got told to use an estuary English, a London accent, and I didn't realise he was Scottish until I saw interviews, like, yep. years later. So it's really good that he actually gets to do something David Tennant in Broadchurch, yeah. It's yeah. just like, yeah. Yeah. what are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, but he's definitely a really good actor very versatile i yes, think not yes. a lot of actors can do that sort of thing no i think um when he gets characters that he enjoys you can really tell mm. and he just performs them fantastically as in bruce and phil fenn as well as um savior and and you know x-men yeah um whatever roles he's been in wanted he's been oh yeah yeah i enjoyed that <laughs> that was good they made him talk an american accent though but apart from that yeah, it was true. Good. Um, I know after I saw this film, I just liked it so much, I went out and started reading the book. The no I didn't realise it was there's, based on a novel. There's a book? Well, it's based on an Irvine Welsh novel. He's a Scottish... He, he was, I think, the author of Train Spotting. I don't know if it's called Train Spotting, mm. but that movie was based on that. And then between Train Spotting and Filth, they tried to remake two of his other novels, but neither of those were successful because I think he... In the book, it's really interesting, he writes uh, just sort of in a normal... Way, but then you'll turn the page and there'll be like writing in the shape of a picture, what and then hell? it'll look like a script. What was that? A, um, which one? Uh, that, that one you're talking about. I remember hearing about well, it. Well, Train Spotting and Phil's are both by Irvine Welsh, so. Never mind. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, is, it, yeah. like, is it similar or? Um, so far, yes. Yeah? It's, it's just amazing they managed to translate it and keep such character to yeah. it, you know, to the big yes. screen. So they've kept like the character really similar and. Yeah, but even the feel of the whole novel, the way that you you imagine it when you're reading it, and the chaos of how he talks, and it's does he sometimes it's really break the fourth wall in the book as well? A little bit, yeah. It's it's very Is cool. It was it set like Glasgow or in Edinburgh? Edinburgh. Nice, Edinburgh, yeah. 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 Um, well, that's all we have time for today. Uh, thank you for joining us, Andrew. Uh, make sure to check out the Showreel podcast and our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube pages. Next week on the show, we'll be having. Oh, a there won't be a next week for you. Uh, wh wh what do you mean? Your time is up. <laughs>
the emotion. Silence. <laughs> Tune in next week for more me and more showreel. See you then. <laughs>